I love bank stocks, and banks can make for some of the best investments you can find. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. We're going to talk about two of my favorite bank stocks, SoFi Technologies and Bank of America, and see if we can figure out which is the better bank stock to buy right now. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, check out our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. Go to that link. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Give it a look. You'll be super happy that you did. Why right now would an investor be looking at these two and thinking about which one might be the better investment to buy? As a starting point, they are really different. Bank of America is stable, very slow growth, trades for a good valuation, pays a solid dividend. SoFi, a little higher up on the risk profile, but also trades for a really good valuation at the same time. I'm going to compare the two. We'll break the two down a little bit, talk about what kind of investor each might be better for, and then you can make the best decision for your own portfolio after you do your own research. Remember, everything that we put together and that we talk about is our analysis. It's not your recommendation for you to make a decision on. You got to own that decision. You can do it. I'm going to share some slides from both companies' most recent earnings presentations, talk about the trajectory of their business, where things are going. Then we'll talk about valuation closer to the end, think about their forward prospects, and then help come to a conclusion. We'll start things off with Bank of America. This is slide seven from Bank of America's fourth quarter. It's really useful at seeing where the trends are for their loans. And you can see over the past year, their loan portfolio has been fairly steady, growing a little bit without a tremendous amount of quarter over quarter volatility. It did shrink a little bit from the second quarter to the third quarter last year. A $1 billion decline wasn't much. Now it's up 1% over the past year, but that doesn't mean that it kept all of its loans and it added 1% of new loans. There's a lot of churn that's happening inside the portfolio. We'll get to in a minute when we start talking about net interest margin and the yield that it's earning on its loan portfolio. Consumer loans. So think about credit card debt, auto loans, mortgages, and then its commercial lending business. Similar trends for both versus its total loan portfolio. A little tiny bit of growth, a little bit of volatility from quarter to quarter, but really, really steady, right? Let's also talk about deposit trends because interestingly enough, one of the things that we've seen with the larger banks is deposits have been shrinking. Look at Bank of America, its consumer banking deposits and that trend has certainly continued to play out. Over the past year or so, it's steadily seen its deposits shrink. Looking beyond the consumer banking business at its global banking business, you see that's actually has grown. Deposits have grown in that area. There's one thing that I think is really important that's worth noticing here. And you, we look in this bottom right and in the top left, and it's generally true for both of those. And that is that the light blue, which is non-interest bearing, that number continues to shrink. Now, why is that important? Because, well, interest rates are up. The bottom line is that your average depositor wants to get more yield. And Bank of America has had a fortress of a balance sheet over the past decade plus in ultra low yield deposits and non-interest bearing deposits. Those non-interest bearing deposits are starting to shrink. That's important because that means its cost of capital is going up. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean the Bank of America's balance sheet's in any trouble. Far from it. One of the reasons it's shrinking is because Bank of America is dragging its feet about raising yields, paying on its deposits, because it can. It has such a large margin of safety in its cash and in its capital that it doesn't have to start raising rates and increasing the yield that it pays on deposits. So we are starting to see some signs that maybe there will be some pressure there. Let's talk about the impact of interest expense on yields that it earns on its loans. So one thing we can see is net interest income, the total dollars in interest that it earns on its uh, lending deposits. It started to steadily be squeezed, and decline a little bit. What that corresponds with is its net interest yield, so-called net interest margin. So we see, again, that number is steadily getting declined. In other words, its cost of capital, Yields that it pays on either deposits and that it pays on any borrowings that it has is increasing faster than the yields that it's earning on the loans in its portfolio. That's important because that means its net income is going to get squeezed, barring its ability to lower costs and expenses in other places. So we do see Bank of America continue to try to get more efficient, 
right size its physical footprint to help improve its efficiency ratio, the percentage of its revenues that it has to pay to cover operating expenses. And that's a way that it can help balance things out. Again, this is not a business that's in any sort of close to being in trouble. Easily one of the two or three strongest banks, if not the strongest bank in the U.S. But the interest rate trends so far have been not necessarily favorable at this point. What's going to be interesting to see is if Bank of America's management is able to reverse that trend, holding the line on yields that it pays on deposits while earning more as it gradually turns over more and more of its loan book at today's higher interest rates and get those higher yields on its portfolio. For SoFi, and its time as a public company, the, the story has really been about growth, but it's starting to transition from just a growth story to a growth and profit story. Incredible member growth at 40% rates. This is a look at its lending products and financial services products. This is its core banking business. 24% growth in lending products, essentially how many loans it has issued. This is not a dollar-based number. It's a number of products. We take all that growth and we look at it on the top line and we see that revenue has grown at an enormous rate, 35% revenue growth in 2023. Most banks would love to be growing at that sort of rate. Now, the concern, of course, is it growing at that rate while also creating more risk or is it growing while managing its risk? Frankly, that's a question we're only going to get the answer to over time. But there are some things to be concerned about we'll talk about in just a minute. I do want to talk about the transition of that story from just growth to growth and profits. This is the company's 2024 guidance. So if I saying you're going to earn money, seven to eight cents in gap net income, that's $100 million in net income at the midpoint of guidance. That's pretty fantastic because one of the problems with SoFi has been, as an investor, seeing it continue to lose money and spending a ton of money on customer acquisition. We see the ads everywhere. Probably anybody watching this video, there's a good chance you've gotten a mailer from SoFi for one of its financial services products. SoFi has spent a ton of money on customer acquisition, and it's starting to get to a scale now where that is starting to pay off. It's still really expensive if you think about it based on just its guidance for 2024 earnings, about 100 times earnings versus about 10 or 11 times expected 2024 earnings for Bank of America. But this is really big caveat with that. Thinking ahead, companies giving guidance going all the way out to 2026 on their expectations for revenue growth, 20 to 25%, through 2026, and they're expecting between 55 and 80 cents a share in gap earnings in 2026. All of a sudden, the stock starts looking a lot cheaper when you look that far out. You're talking like 12 or 13 times 2026 earnings at the recent share prices. I want to talk about the core differences between a Bank of America and a SoFi. As a starting point, Bank of America's loan portfolio I think it's fair to say is probably significantly safer than SoFi's because a lot of the loans that they have are secured by things like cars, real estate, a home. There's a tremendous amount of its debt is secured. That means that there's an asset there. And it's also the sorts of loans that the borrower is more likely to continue making payments on during challenging economic times. Now for SoFi, its loan book is far riskier on the risk curve of lending in general. That's because the majority of its loans are unsecured. A lot of personal loans for things like credit card consolidation or consolidation of other high interest debt. Student loans, these types of debts are unsecured. Obviously, people want to continue to pay on the debts that they owe. And also, SoFi does tout very high FICO scores, high income scores for its borrowers. That builds in some margin of safety that it's lending to high quality, low risk borrowers. But the nature of the bulk of its loans today do open it up to higher levels of risk in periods of weak economic opportunity. Okay, we'll do one more screen share here and talk a little about valuation so you can help work through your decision if you're trying to decide if Bank of America or if SoFi fit in your portfolio. So we're going to start with price to earnings ratio again. Not useful for SoFi right now because, well, it's just now gotten to the point where it's going to earn profits and it's only going to earn seven or eight cents a share according to management's estimates in 2024. So it doesn't really have a PE ratio at this point. But for Bank of America, over the past five years, 11.8 times earnings is a pretty reasonable valuation to pay for. Now, if we look at forward valuations, 
we'll start to get a little bit on SoFi. Again, about 11 and a half times for V of A. It's expected to earn a similar amount in 2024 as it did in 2023. SoFi is going to earn money, they're saying, in 2024. So we actually have some estimates for it. But again, 66 times so early in its earnings story, not a great useful number to really be thinking about valuation. Book value is a handy metric when you're thinking about banks. Again, both of these 10.8 times, or excuse me, one point, less than 1.1 times for Bank of America. That's a reasonable valuation. Again, it's going to track relatively closely. If its PE ratio is reasonable, its book value ratio is probably going to be pretty reasonable too. SoFi's at about 1.3 times. Again, you can see it's come down a substantial amount from where it was uh, when the company went public as the stock price has come down a bunch. So I think 1.3 times for a bank with its growth rate that's getting into the profitability levels that it's getting it to, getting into, that it's the management is projecting that it will get into, that's a pretty reasonable valuation. Uh, one more thing that we can throw in here that is useful, Bank of America pays a good dividend. That dividend yields about 2.6%. Now, that's not what you can get from cash in a money market account. It's lower than you're getting in a 10-year treasury. But 2.6% yield is not bad, especially considering Bank of America's ability and likelihood of continuing to grow that payout over time. Okay, put it all together. What's the story? Bank of America, is it a buy? SoFi, is it a buy? Looking at both, looking ahead, thinking five plus years, I think that they're both buys. But again, it depends on what you as an investor might be looking for. An investor who's really focused on growth, willing to stomach some volatility, and also the risk. Number one, economic conditions deteriorate. SoFi experiences higher defaults in its loan book, and that causes increased losses or and or a combination of poor execution, maybe their guidance and what they're expecting to deliver down the road by 2026. Maybe they don't deliver on it. Maybe the growth story isn't as great as management saying costs get out of control. They don't get to that level of profitability. Well, even a perfect valuation, a company doesn't execute well, might not go well. That's the risk with SoFi. If they do execute really well, I think they will. And I think today's price is going to turn out to be a bargain. Bank of America doesn't have the same kind of upside as SoFi does. Steady, very slow growth. They're so big, FDIC is not going to let them go out and make big acquisitions to grow. So you're looking at paying a fair valuation higher interest rates, eventually turning over its loan portfolio, increasing that interest margin, growing earnings, earnings per share going up, growing the dividend, using excess cash that's left over to buy back shares. That's how it will create per share value for you. If you're looking for something lower risk, you like the idea of a dividend and seeing that dividend grow over time, then Bank of America is probably the right pick. Either way, I think they both look really attractive right now. It's just a matter of figuring out if either or both makes the most sense for you and your portfolio.